I'm Ladi and this is my wife Margaret. We decided to use COVID lockdown to challenge ourselves to build the ultimate camper van with no imagination limits and see what we end up with. And I see exactly how much water is still running out of there without the need of leaving my comfort here. <laughs> We can just keep this open all the time and have access to the food constantly. We want to have a permanent space for laptops. You would never expect anything valuable is hidden in this unit. This panel is able to charge a lot of the batteries for these things. And then we have a pulley system from below. It pretty much loops the wire so I can be pulling and it still retracts straight up. We bought a 2015 Fiat Ducato L4H3 that was originally a DPD delivery van for 12,000 US dollars. Our goal was to spend 20,000 US dollars for the van and conversion, but we likely spent a bit over 25,000. We began recording the process of building our van for YouTube, and then the whole thing snowballed into us starting an e-bike business, renovating our workshop and barn, building a cabin, and we began converting a small container home. We wouldn't have been able to do any of this without YouTube. So thank you for watching this video. We opted for gray color to be less noticeable. We installed our surveillance cameras with motion detection recording, lock plates, remote control paddle locks, GPS tracking system, immediately alarm, and a lot of secret storage inside. We are very power hungry <laughs> with our e-bikes and induction stove cooking. So I prototype motorized solar panel lift with self-locking mechanism. It tilts up to 47 degrees, remote controlled, and lifts four panels totaling one kilowatt power. It's incredibly helpful early and late hours and most of the days in off-season camping. Just casually in the grocery store parking lot. And we were parked in the shade for a while this weekend, so Lottie is milking as much <laughs> sun as he can while we're doing errands in the city. The whole layout was designed around our two powerful electric bikes. It's important they are easy to access for quick riding opportunities and don't have to be assembled and disassembled multiple times a day. Traveling with these powerful e-bikes gives us completely different life dynamic. Big distances in the comfort of our van and exploring locally on our e-bikes, free of charge and quietly. There are a lot of details in this very tiny kitchen. We'll start with everything up top. We hated on our last van that when we opened the top, it would like, you had to kind of duck and dodge. This way, when we're parked somewhere, we can just keep this open all the time and have access to the food constantly. To keep our cups and wine glasses and little shot glasses for either an adult beverage or a small espresso, all mounted on the top. Room for every carb you could possibly crave and all of our sauces as well. The other bonus of this kitchen is keeping our bread and our fruit on mounted baskets. This gives us a lot more space, not only in the drawers, but also in our fridge. Because everything has a space, it keeps this kitchen from getting messy, even when you're cooking a large meal or you're hosting or you're just too busy to clean. It's a little hidden, but there's also a sliding door here in the back to access a portion of our fuses. There's power spots everywhere. <laughs> Just above our sink, we have our full control panel. This gives us all the details for the levels of our gray water, our fresh water, and the controls for our anti-freeze for our tanks that are below the van 
below that we have controls for our fans. What's nice about having the controls for the fans here is that we can control the speed or which ones are on and off from both the bed and the kitchen when we're cooking and we need to push the steam out of the van. Having the soap mounted on this panel has been such a game changer. We have hand soap and dish soap. This keeps the counter clean and gives us more space, but it's also one less worry when you start driving. You don't have things flying across the van. Then we have two magnets that hold all of our cutlery, bits and bobs for cooking. And then just here stored upside down is our salt and pepper. The reason we store them upside down is so the steam from the stove doesn't clog them up. We decided to do an extension. We don't need it up all the time. We'll oftentimes keep our coffee machine up here when we're doing longer stints in one place. We have our two burner electric stove and then a smaller sink. Chopping board stored on the top, filtered water, UV light right next to it. Really like the flexible faucet because you can clean the sink with it. It's easier to wash your face, make room in the sink if you need more of it. We went above and beyond with details with a little sponge holder. <laughs> the camper van is equipped with a 124 liter fridge that runs off of 230 volts. It's slightly lifted off the ground for easier access to the bottom shelves. And it's also in the very center of the van, which helps with the weight distribution. As a bonus, this fridge includes a small freezer for ice cubes and treats, making it a very practical companion for the hot summer days. These latches lock the moment that you close them and then it's pushed to open. We have our junk drawer, snack drawer, oven, tins, everything kind of heavier towards the bottom, and then pots and pans down here as well. Then we have a lot of 3D printing here, so everything blue. This is cooling for the oven. So on this shelf we normally keep blender and the coffee machine and we strap them with the strap when driving so they don't fly around. We have two outlets for 230 for these two appliances and there is also USB charging too. Underneath is a little 3D printed lock with aluminum door and we store wine bottles in there. So lastly, this is a, one of three positions for our swivel table for this reclining couch. Ooh, how much I love this spot. <laughs> we recycled a really old, ugly couch and uh, I just mined the mechanism from it. We made a basis, cut the foam, we reupholstered them. This is a very popular spot because it's a recliner. It's just nice when we have a rainy days for a week in a row to switch seats, to drive a long drive and actually have different shape seat. This is awesome when we host people that they actually have somewhere to be in, not just being on a bed. So underneath we have electric heater. When we're plugged to a grid in the winter time, we don't have to be burning diesel. What I really like that this is just on four bolts. We can just loosen it and take it away and replace it with anything else we decide to have here in the future. We took a unique approach when it comes to the side window curtain. We wanted a curtain option that was built into the wall that would help with privacy, light leaks, insulation, and also would be height adjustable. One of the bigger goals was to add to the internal decor. 
It was one of the more difficult creations within this van because it included a number of 3D printed holders, springs, and framing. The curtain itself is a photo that we took while traveling in Italy out of one of our previous vans. It's a really nice detail that doesn't make us feel so isolated from nature when all of the curtains are closed and we're operating in a small space. Welcome to the cab. This is where we spend the majority of our time. It's also both of our offices. First of all, swivels, the most important, extending the space in the camper van, two extra chairs, utilizing actually the cab space. Just under our feet, we have a step. This makes it so we have both feet on the floor comfortably when we're working. It also has secret storage underneath, heating foil, so we have heated floors on this step. And then both of us have a diesel heater outtake right next to where our toes are. These steps are crucially important because when you swivel around, the floor height difference is roughly this big and then people end up with dangling feet and it's not comfortable. Then we have a custom made swivel basis. My side comes with a Lagoon table mount. It can swivel nice and easy. And then this can also attach to the front of the van, which we'll show you in a minute. On my side, I have this unit with a desk that houses USBs extensions. That's the switch for the floor heating. I have 230 outlet and a USB socket. And then we have a sliding desk. This keeps the layout open and the desk just slides in and hides. What I really like about this is the secret laptop storage compartment. Because we want to have a permanent space for laptops, you would never expect anything valuable is hidden in this unit. Big security peace of mind for sure. Mm -hmm. Permanently, not just temporarily. You don't have to hide them there before you go somewhere. You store them there, always. The laptop sits straight in a Thunderbolt connector that connects my monitor and it charges the laptop when it's in there. And it also connects to a USB extension. So I have all the ports here on the sides. If I am doing a little bit bigger work, that's when it gets interesting. And then I have my trackpad, mouse, access to the storage here. So in this camper van, we usually aim for bigger trips. Having the right conditions make me sustainable so much more in a camper van long term versus always doing the work in uncomfortable conditions that would make me angry sooner or later. Set up like this, I spread my workflow differently. I work early hours and late hours throughout the day. And through the main chunk of the day, we try to see the place, explore, live our lives somewhere else rather than around the house. <laughs> This camper van was a big challenge for me and I've created an extensive wiring diagram for our electrical system. This is included in our van build bundle along with other packets of information such as our water tank dimensions, 3D print models and parts list. Above us we have storage for our custom curtains. One side blackout, the other side is reflective. Those are just held on these rods. We also have a cab light, which is dimmable and really nice for the evenings as well. Mm -hmm. 
For the van itself, we don't have opening windows apart from the roof windows, but we do have these vents that are in the cab that are really nice if you wanna have a window cracked and not be sacrificing any security. Okay, should we swivel to the front? I'm faster than you. So this display is pretty cool. That turns on with the ignition and it shows me the temperature on the coolant and temperature in the tank. And then as soon as I see it's warm, I turn the button on, deflect it to our utility hot water tank and start heating up the water. So we have a intake and outtake for the glycol from the motor. It goes in a tube like this and goes back to the motor. So I just open that circuit, start transferring the heat in our hot water. It's so cool. Everything you could ever want for a passenger princess position is just here. Hair stuff, computer glasses, wet wipes, basically everything you need for a comfortable road trip just in the zone. If I continue to procrastinate while we were parked somewhere, I have plenty of opportunity to work. Boom, baby. But we always need to turn the airbags off if I ever need to work while we're on our way. And then one more cool feature that I'm really proud of would be our gray water camera with light. So I turn it on here. I see this is the gray water outtake and I have a switch to dump it to open that valve and I see exactly how much water is still running out of there without the need of leaving my comfort here, <laughs> especially in the rainy days. This is so, so convenient. When building this, it seemed to be over the top, but now I'm very happy I did it. Just above our reclining couch, we have our tech wall. Might look a little bit crazy, but for us, it makes traveling with camera gear so much easier. This panel is able to charge a lot of the batteries for these things, such as the drone batteries and our GoPro batteries. All of the orange parts are 3D printed, custom modeled for the piece that they are holding. So if we ever swap out gear, we'd simply print a different type of holder and add it onto the panel itself. It gives us easy access to things that are quite a hassle to have packed away, especially when you need to access them quickly. This whole thing has quite a lot of thought into it. So let me walk you through. First of all, we extended the wires from the 3D printer for me to have the accessible from this driving chair. So I can uh, put a memory card in, bring in the file and start printing it from here. And also when printing, seeing all the stats on the display. So then I have switches here for the light and for the temperature controlled enclosure in there. So it has a thermostat, checks the temperature. When it gets too hot, it cleans the air and blows it out. I have an intake suction fan here. And then we have a suction outside of a van. It really helped us a lot with uh, multiple occasions, like I needed a hose reduction, I just printed it. We started leaking gray water, so I was able to 3D print a threaded plug and plug it in. We were still finishing up the camper van, so a bunch of corners, a bunch of covers, I was able to 3D print as we lived in it.
in the building phase when all these ideas were showing up it only made sense to do leds here uh, to better see in these shelves as they are deep well later on we were like oh that was overkill i guess but not up until we started actually using the van it's a big difference when searching for something it genuinely makes a breeze to like oh especially when it's a little bit darker outside it's beautiful everything internet and cameras related we have stored here this is a little 3d printed vent this is a wi-fi router and a switch in there and it has a air outtake here for a little bit of a air circulation i very much like the convenience of this tech unit It has a lot of information we need on a daily basis. This is for electric heater. This is metal station to see the weather, see the temperature, see the humidity and have a bit of a prediction. Then we have ceiling dimmers. Very practical and convenient. These LEDs always changing based on what we need. Then we have the heater fan that ties to the electric heater. And then we have solar voltage, with, uh, which I haven't plugged yet. And a battery voltage to roughly see how much charge we have left. Then we have a diesel heater display, cab light with a dimmer. And then, never touch this, very careful around it. This is motorized fresh water release valve. It's very cool when we decide to do a big drive and we have a full tank that we can easily drop it and uh, not to carry that unnecessary big weight. And then when I actually flip it down, I have my fuse boxes, I have a bunch of controllers for the solar panel tilt. I can run multiple more wires if I need to. These speakers tied to the car radio, that's what we use as a main media player. Then this whole storage on the side door is, in our opinion, very unutilized in other vans. 3D printed handle, practical for closing the door from inside. And then we have more storage below. We also have this aluminum channel for all the condensation to get straight from the window out of the camper van, doesn't stay inside. We don't have to be wiping it every morning. This tiny little unit is actually much more significant than it looks and is one of our favorites. First off, it is much shorter than the other counter spots just so we can keep this open feeling and have still a great view from the couch looking out the window. It's thinner because we still need to be able to extend our reclining couch. Having it thinner has allowed us to store three pairs of our shoes externally which makes it really quick grab and go for both Lottie and I. We also have our broom stored here with a 3D printed holder. And then within the unit itself, we're able to keep shoes, toilet paper, and both of us have a bin for our socks. Everything that's stored inside is also accessible from the outside of the van because we have the other side fold down into a table. One of the details that's not super noticeable to a lot of people, but has made this unit like the most convenient thing in the van is this small lip. It's better than putting stuff in a drawer, always looking for something that you just had in your hands or we don't have to move when we drive. Keep purses here, bags, sunglasses, whatever you need. Just above the lip, we have the controls for our motorized step on the exterior. And then we also have both of our light switches for the two ceiling LEDs above us.
When it came to designing this van overall, both Lottie and I knew that we didn't want to have a closed off room for a bathroom. We're both bigger. We like to be able to stretch around and actually have some movement space for changing, not a big block off. So instead, we have this unit, which is a little bit higher than our kitchen. This allows not only for a standing desk, but we are still able to utilize a bunch of the wall storage here and a mirror. I'll show you the bathroom in a minute, but first, this is what I would consider my getting ready zone. Okay, so this is one of my favorite spots in the entire van. I'm able to have all of my toiletries on display, quick lotion, deodorant, sunscreen, quick to grab things are all out here. You can see it, you can access it quickly. So much better than I thought it would be. We have three plugs just below, my light switch and a USB. This is my closet. Lottie and I store our clothes on different sides of the van. So when we're changing or getting ready to go somewhere, we're not in each other's space. It stays open with this little 3D printed hook. Sometimes. <laughs> this is where I keep kind of my everyday clothes, pajamas, anything else, everything bulkier or that we use less often, we have other storage spots throughout the van. I think it's time to finally show off the bathroom. That's gonna be a debate. This is our convertible shower space. We have an OGO composting toilet, very easy to use. And also a urine diversion system that goes straight to our gray water tank. At least I'm in my box. You're saving your box, that's good. Like a cat, kitten litter. I have my box. The indoor shower is here. We have hot water, which is really nice. Don't bring the same bathroom expectations from a house into a van. Showers are short, water is limited, and public toilets are everywhere. <laughs> when it comes to hygiene, Outdoor shower is our favorite throughout the warm season. We use it for showering, rinsing our feet or shoes, or anything else. It's very freeing feeling to keep all the water outside, feel the fresh air, and connect with the world. This is mostly used as a sitting shower. I can pull off standing inside, but it works. Having two options on where to shower has been really fabulous because if we're somewhere public we can always shower inside but if it's a beautiful night and we're camped out in the middle of nowhere an outdoor shower is a blast originally we thought we'd be adding a curtain extension and we had a number of ideas but we were so ready to hit the road that we skipped it and it kind of feels like now adding a curtain would be a little bit of a downgrade this is very simple and it's worked really well The bed is definitely unusually high. It's because what we store in a garage underneath. We have a step built in to get comfortably to the bed. The bed itself is aluminum frame. It's very lightweight. We have completely paneled up back door. That's another mistake we learned before and uh, that we kept the metal exposed. It was cooling me down all the time because I'm the one sleeping next to it. So we would have to improvise blankets to insulate it. This time lightened plywood, K-Flex 6mm insulation and fabric on the top completely solved the problem. This is beautifully insulated camper van. Then we obviously have extra storage on the door and we have a cup holder, which is very practical for water bottles. The panorama window, that is a absolutely lovely feature, not to feel like in a dark pit and having the view actually on the sky, seeing the world out. Panorama roof windows allow a lot of natural light to come inside. 
We love darker interiors and without enough natural light it can feel like being in a cave. We plastic welded our under mounted water tanks, 150 liters fresh and 100 liters grey. We installed water level sensors, temperature sensors, motorized dumping valves and anti-freeze heaters. This freed a lot of space inside of our camper van while carrying plenty of water for longer off-grid camping. We designed this whole camper van layout around our two electric motorcycles we make. They are very easy to just grab and go because of the bed lift, making more space, lifting it up, taking and riding. In bright daylight it charges straight from the solar in 3 hours or fast charges in 1 hour from our lithium power bank. We need to store our electric bikes inside, there is no option to store them outside. Safe environment, away from the rain. This electrical box is right in the middle of the van for optimum weight distribution and it stores a big battery we built in its base. It's purposely made behind this acrylic door uh, on display because I just love the technical look of it. The water system is on the driver's side, all exposed purposely so I can quickly identify any leaks. We have a water filtration system for drinking, we have a pressure tank, we have a water pump, we have UV light and also outdoor shower which we love so much. We laser cut these bins for a variety of tools. We have one that lifts at the back. And then we have 3D printed hooks for helmets. And above me, we have the servicing ladder to access solar panels and clean them occasionally. On the passenger side, we have more of the aluminum bins for all sorts of storage. The back one is for dirty laundry, <laughs> conveniently used when the bed is up from the living space. I have some of the essential tools that I have exposed to quickly grab and go and you might have noticed the extension cable at the back. So that's interesting one, hidden here and just pull a retractable cord from below the, of the van to plug it to a grid. When you don't have to store extension cords, this is a three phase wire so we can really be running up to nine kilowatts when we are consuming the power. We can be charging the lithium, charging the bikes and we can be running the heated floors, cooking on electricity, everything. And then we have a pulley system from below it pretty much loops the wire this way so I can be pulling and it still retracts straight up.
We completely paneled up our back door and insulated it properly, just not to have a big heatsink overnight especially. We have all of the 3D printed storage pretty modular. We can replace that with anything anytime for a purpose. This is a good bungee for spare paper towels and whatever. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this entire video. I'm sure there's a lot of details that we missed or maybe didn't explain very well, but we'll do our best to answer whatever questions you have down in the comment section below. We have a lot of really exciting content on the horizon, so make sure to subscribe to this channel to make sure you don't miss it. Thank you again for all of your support.